transfer portal madness the gophers are getting hit hard by the transfer portal is it time to panic because this portal is definitely it's not giving pain it's taking pain hey, you are no locked on happens, golden gophers no matter what we're gonna do here we're just gonna keep rowing your daily podcast on the minnesota uh, golden out, gophers however it turns out we're just gonna keep rowing part of the locked on podcast network your team every day we're just gonna keep rowing keep rowing and keep rowing What's up, Gopher fans? You are listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And today we are just getting hit left and right when it comes to the Gophers transfer portal. In fact, I haven't been able to look since I hit start on this podcast, but who knows? We could maybe even have another player in the portal. That's what it feels like with three players entering the portal today and one yesterday four total players already hitting the portal for the gophers so where do we go from here now is it a full-blown panic is it all all alarms are going off right now or is it just overreaction by the number of it a number of departures on top of them happening so quickly. We're going to dive into all of that today. We're going to talk about the departures of Pharrell Payne and Carrington added in there. We're going to talk about, is it time to panic with Minnesota yet? And I'm not quite sure it is. It feels like it should be, but I've got a different side of the thought for you there. And then finally, if Things get worse. Could Coil hit reset on the whole whole thing? So if you want to hear about daily Gophers content, definitely be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube or follow along wherever you get podcasts at Locked on Golden Gophers. Now, first things first, we got to talk about these players in the portal because Joshua Joseph hit the portal yesterday. That was sad but expected. Braden Carrington hit the portal today, and that was not as much expected, but it's manageable. Isaiah Enan hit the portal and again, sad, but expected with the dwindling of minutes and less time and whatnot as the season went on. But for Raul Payne hitting the transfer portal, that was a massive gut punch. Now he was a beast of a center for the Gophers, 10 points a game, 6.1 rebounds a game, 60% shooting from the floor, leaving Minnesota is hard to fathom. It's hard to imagine that Pharrell Payne, someone who the Gophers have really prioritized, really put at the forefront, really put him as a key piece of this team. Someone, Coach Ben Johnson, passed up on other highly recruited big men in the state in his very first class. And he was centered in on Pharrell Payne. He's talked to us in the media about this. He said, others were like, why aren't you going for this guy? This is the guy you need to go for. And he watched one game of Payne. He's like, no, this is our guy. All of a sudden, all that investment, gone, out the window. He was getting a lot of playing time. 24 minutes a game, started 19 of the 32 games played. Now he had injuries left and right, so there were some starts not in there. There was some stubbornness with the starts not happening at times, but he was one of the players seeing NIL opportunities for sure because he had multiple shirts or jerseys on the Dinkytown Athletes site and in the store. And on top of that, he was being treated as a face of the team. He was a player with many media interactions. He was a player who was brought to the Big Ten Media Days to be a face of the program with the Gophers. And now he's no longer going to be with the program, and it's just hard to fathom. Now, when you're talking about his play on the floor, he had the second highest usage percentage on the team, only behind Dawson Garcia. And especially as we got into the later games, especially as he got more healthy, you could see Coach Ben Johnson and team or staff working the ball inside to Pharrell Payne to get him looks on the offensive side, but also getting him defensive usage and heavy priorities on defense. So he was a staple for this Gophers team, and that's why it is just shocking to see him actually hit the portal. Now, like I said, he was banged up all season on and off. So even with that, with him being banged up, he saw a ton of time. But it's hard to imagine that if he would have been more healthy, if he would have headed into next season healthier, that Minnesota would have wanted to get him more looks and more post touches than they even were able to this past season. So that begs the question, why is this portal transfer happening? 
And the only thing I can really think about is NIL opportunities. The only thing I can think about is getting a payday because you have a staff invested in you. You have a team that's centering around you. You are kind of one of the future building blocks of the team. Now, granted, he's heading into his junior year, so he only really would have had two more years left to play. But still, it is hard to swallow. It definitely has an impact. It definitely hurts. And that's, I think, where the most panic comes from. I think Gophers fans all kind of had an idea of Joshua Joseph and Isaiah Enan hitting the transfer portal. We all had kind of come to that conclusion that it was very likely to happen. We've said it here on the show for two weeks now that, you know what, until I hear otherwise, I'd probably count them as leaving. Braden Carrington, I didn't expect he was going to transfer. You know, I felt like he saw a vast amount of minutes, 21 minutes a game for the Gophers as a mainly defensive player, not really being able to find his shot or opportunities on that front, mainly defensive play and rebounding, but he still got 21 minutes a game. And I find it hard to believe that another power conference team is going to give a scholarship to a player of that sort, because like I said, he was a surprise, but he struggled offensively, especially his offensive box score plus minus was a negative 1.6. Some of the lowest on the team. He had the lowest true shooting percentage on the team of 45.4%. The next lowest was Elijah Hawkins, but he was almost 10% better at 54 point three percent his perimeter defense was the staple for him to get on the floor but there were still struggles late down in the season especially with the Michigan State team in the tournament he could be like I said he saw playing time I was wondering maybe he wants a bigger opportunity maybe he wants an opportunity to be a starter somewhere or something and I that could still be the case but he played in 29 games started 10 games and he saw 21 minutes a game on average this season so I can't imagine another power conference is going to be offering that type of playing time competitively for him in the portal. So maybe he ends up going to a lower major school and getting the opportunity to start, but definitely caught me by surprise. But that being said, could the writing have been on the wall for Carrington with a potential transfer addition coming in? Maybe there's some things working in the backside. That's why I'm not quite ready to go full-blown panic mode because regardless of all of this, both of those departures, uh, Added to the Joshua Joseph departure, added to the Isaiah Enan departure. It's a lot of departures for Minnesota, but mainly Joshua Joseph Carrington and Payne. That means Ben's first recruiting class that he came here with Minnesota of four. Jaden Henley and then those three are all officially gone before any of them even reached their junior seasons, which is just crazy. College basketball is on a whole new level of on this instability and that is what is scary for a program like the gophers because if you're not a power team a blue blood type team you could find yourselves in some tough waters over these next few years unless there's some regulations getting into play now all of that being said what is the future outlook of this minnesota team do these transfers mean we should panic or could it be pointing to something else we're going to talk about that coming up next First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Nissan because each week we're picking one team that stands out in the March Madness tournament and highlighting it. And this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan, like always. And we're talking about a team that has pushed it further than the rest, just like all of the new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These teams were able to take it to the next level. And this week's team was the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Obviously, they're the this week's Nissan Rogue. Team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in their first two games of the tournament. And they had wins over Texas Tech and Oakland that have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done here. So you can take action now, take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. You can do all that over at NissanUSA.com. So shop NissanUSA.com today. And while we're at it, let's talk about our friends over at Better Together, because right now is the time to take a swing. Are Is your bracket busted? If you want to stay in the game, well, it's 
I'm introducing a new app to you called Better Together. That's B-E-T-T-O-R Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. All you have to do is pick more or less with real-time player stats and strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Now, some things that are awesome about Better Together, in my opinion, is that it's the first cooperative daily fantasy ac application. But on top of that, you get to feel a sense of camaraderie. You get to test out your group chat. You get to see uh, who is better. Maybe you can go face off against others and show that your squad is the best when it comes to DFS. So right now, it's a way to stay connected with friends when we can't do it so as much or watch sports together in person. But you can use this as a way to connect when it comes to the sporting community and put your group trap to the test. And right now, you can download Better Together from the App Store and sign up using promo code LOCKEDON. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. And you can play with me. Sometimes we're going to put a contest together. But remember, the code is locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. All right, Govers fans, so is it time to sound the alarm? Is it time to freak out? Is it time to panic? That's what we're going to get into right now because I am not sure we're quite there, but it could be very close to on the way. So what do I mean by that? I think if you're talking about is it time to panic, the answer to that question right now is maybe, but it really depends on what happens next because we have heard the praise from Coach Tom Izzo over with Michigan State, talking about if Minnesota retains its players, its roster, it could be a scary team next year. Well, we're not seeing that retention. We're not seeing that team be back, that core of players be back, but it's still not completely gone. And that's the big part of this because, yes, there is some panic, but the biggest panic is only to come if more is to follow because the Joshua the Joseph loss, yes, it stinks. But again, it was kind of anticipated. You see the upside with him, but Regardless, he wasn't getting minutes. The Carrington departure is strange, but that's a fillable spot. The Isaiah Enan departure is, again, one we kind of expected, but a fillable spot. The pain departure is what stings the most, but could that mean Dawson Garcia is back? Maybe that opportunity and knowing that the usage, the highest usage on the team was Dawson Garcia and him coming back, maybe Payne wants an opportunity to be the go-to guy. Could these departures be in lieu of seeing the lack of playing time or the desired usage uh, as writing on the wall? What do I mean by that? I mean, in the case of Joshua Joseph, his minutes were already zapped in February and March. He wasn't seeing opportunity. And then Fox seemed to take over his role this season. So this could mean maybe maybe Parker Fox is going to use that final year of eligibility and try to come and play with the Gophers one last time. Or maybe someone from the Gophers, someone the Gophers are hard after in the portal is very close to committing. Maybe they're like, I am really trying to come play in Minnesota. And that would take the opportunity away for Joshua Joseph to get back on the floor. In the case of Pharrell Payne, now this is the one people are probably most baffled by. Could this mean Dawson Garcia is back and Payne isn't the future down low? Or could the thought of Dawson plus a transfer like Andrew Morgan, who is visiting the Gophers this weekend from North Dakota State, six foot ten center, who would have probably backed up for El Payne, but that only means less minutes because last year we only really had Dawson Garcia and Pharrell Payne as the bigs. So if you add another big, that's going to take more big minutes. And maybe that means Pharrell Payne doesn't get above the 24 minutes a game he was seeing. Maybe he wants to see closer to 30 minutes a game and that opportunity isn't there for him with more bigs on the way. Or could it mean Cam Christie is possibly headed back along with Dawson Garcia making Pharrell Payne fall to around third in the pecking order of this offense? Those are different ways that maybe Pharrell Payne was like, look, I want to be the feature somewhere. In which case, we'll find that out sooner than later 
by what decision he makes in the transfer portal. In the case of Braden Carrington, could the addition of Isaac Asuma and him coming in to take guard minutes on top of Cam Christie possibly being back, plus some names Minnesota is attacking in the portal, could that make Carrington think his minutes were bound to decrease? Those are all potential opportunities of why these transfers could be happening. Now, it's hard to say, but we are still on hold before going full-blown SpongeBob, he forgot his name, full-blown panic mode. So we can take a quick breath. I know it seems like it's it's super uh, haywire right now, but there could still be positive to come. That is what it, that's why we're on the maybe answer right now. Because if Dawson Garcia runs it back, if Elijah Hawkins runs it back, if Mike Mitchell runs it back, if Cam Christie comes back, those four. Well, the panic becomes a little bit less because that is still a solid core of four players. And that's three of your best players back on the squad, because I personally would have said Pharrell Payne was the fourth best player on this team. I think Elijah Hawkins brought more to this team as a holistic player. I think Cam Christie and Dawson Garcia were both more weapons on the offensive side of the ball and both held their own defensively. Now, Pharrell Payne, defensive monster, had some moments of flair on the offense, but isn't as much of an at-will score as Cam Christie or Dawson Garcia. So in my estimation, my personal opinion, I think Pharrell Payne was the fourth best player on the team. So if you can bring your three best players back on top of Mike Mitchell Jr. back, a consistent piece that started many games, and then if you can go and if Ben can land two key transfers in the portal, that panic becomes even less and it fills the voids of a Carrington and a Josh Ola Joseph. And then you have Isaac Asuma and maybe even Grayson Grove who could come in and play minutes as freshmen and play, uh, play well. Then that draws back the panic some. And it shows young promise on this team. Maybe Caden Betts is ready to step up and take some minutes. That could be promising and give less panic. If these departures mean that there's a, a roster spot available for Parker Fox to say, let's do this thing one last ride in Minnesota, you see where I'm going. Yes, these departures and seeing departure after departure after departure in less than 24 hours makes a fan base scramble. It makes it super uneasy, but it doesn't mean mission critical right now. But if Dawson also leaves, if Cam Christie also leaves and Parker Fox calls it a college career and you're looking at Elijah Hawkins, Mike Mitchell Jr. as your only core returners next season, well, then Minnesota is likely left in the dust and this season was all truly for nothing. So then a whole new question comes to mind. And that question is, if that mission critical point comes, whether fair or not, would Mark Coyle call it a wrap and hit reset on coaching too? We're going to wrap up the show with thoughts on that topic coming up next. First, let's talk to you about our friends over at Amazon Fire TV because Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights and in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing features with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, and free live TV as well. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which is now or the college basketball tournament, which is also rolling on, you're going to want to have Fire TV. And Fire TV has recently created Fire TV channels that deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands out there all for free. That includes us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into game analysis, highlights, and more to stay up to date in the world of sports through it all. So check out Fire TV and Fire TV channels with Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out the Fire TV channels yet, I am telling you, you are missing out. Trust me on this one. So go to www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV to learn more. Again, that's amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV to learn more. All right, Ghost fans, we're wrapping this one up by talking about if we hit that critical point, if with these departures we have from the portal on top of that, Cam Christie leaves and uh, Dawson Garcia ends up leaving as well, 
would Mark Coyle hit the reset button on coaching and would we be starting from ground zero? That is what I want to address to wrap up today's show because Coyle and Ben Johnson have been step for step with each other on the long term and wanting to see this team build sustainably for long term success. Now, Mark Coyle has said he believes this team not only can make the NCAA tournament next year, but they could make a very deep run in the tournament. And I think he probably would still believe that if that four players come back on top of adding some more additions and the youth coming in. But if we don't ever have that player attention, if we end up losing those players and the roster that was anticipated and we're back at square one or square two, Would Mark Coyle say it's time for a change? Would he blow it up and have everything start completely from scratch? That is the question. And you know what? It's hard to imagine that that wouldn't be the case if the Gophers lose Cam Christie and Dawson Garcia. I feel like those right now are the final pieces, the final straw that could break the camel's back. It all rests on the shoulders of Christy and Dawson Garcia because whether it is fair or not, whether there has been progress or not, Losing that many players would make it hard for any coach to continue to trudge through it all. This Gophers team had nine players start at least one single game last year and nine players, the same nine players, played in 28 or more games for the Gophers in this season. Now, right now, we have four of those nine players in the transfer portal, and we still have a potential loss of Parker Fox if he is not to come back and he calls it a college career. So that means that we could have five of those potential nine for sure gone next season, which means you have to hold on to the other four. You have to have somewhat of a retention. Otherwise, it's year after year after year of having very few returning players. And we've seen what happens when we don't have returning players with this program and this coaching staff. And it's not necessarily fair, but it is what it is. So it basically comes down to Dawson Garcia and Cam Christie who could have other options. They could take a shot at the pros. They could take a shot at finding NIL offers elsewhere, or they could be the face of this program, the team that held it together. And if this team could get to the NCAA tournament with them at the helm, you're talking about legendary status when it comes to Gophers basketball. So basically if Dawson Garcia and Cam Christie commit to staying here, pairing with Elijah Hawkins, pairing with Mike Mitchell Jr., and then really Coach Ben and them get after it when it comes to adding some impact transfers. That's where things could get back on track. But we are teetering. We are walking a fine line right now. Because that, if they leave, that could be seven out of nine players leaving. And if those seven left, what's stopping other veteran players like Elijah Hawkins or Mike Mitchell Jr. from saying, look, I don't have that much eligibility left. Why would I stay here when we're starting over once again? I want to play in the tournament. I want to get an opportunity to put myself on the biggest stages. So if you lose those seven, who's to say you don't lose all nine? And if you lose seven to nine of your players who played in 28 plus games, that That in itself is a rebuild, whether it was planned or not. And I find it hard to imagine that things on the staff wouldn't change as well if you lost all of your core to the transfer portal. Now, this next month of Gophers basketball is going to be critical. It is going to be literally priority numero uno is retaining those four final players. Otherwise, this thing could get ugly quick. And this offseason just went from promising to major questions in the blink of an eye. So Cam Christie and Dawson Garcia could be the glue that holds this thing together and keeps a guy like Elijah Hawkins happy, keeps Michael Mitchell Jr. here, entices other impact transfers to come here. Or Cam Christie and Dawson Garcia could be the final straw of what happens to finally break the camel's back. It could be what happens to watch this program collapse like a game of Jenga. It all rides on these next couple weeks and what happens with our major players and Dawson Garcia and Cam Christie. Now, something that could be a breath of fresh air is if Dawson Garcia comes out relatively soon here and says, I'm locked in, I'm running it back, me and Elijah got you. Me and Mike Mitchell and Elijah got you. Maybe that then entices Cam Christie to be like, look, Pharrell Payne's gone. 
I can have more opportunities to get more shots, to be more of a feature, to get a higher draft stock. I'm locked in. Let's run it back. That's when things get interesting. That's when hope starts to come back, but we don't know if that will happen. Right now, it's looking like you can either have hope or you can have mission critical ground zero, and we're starting over. But right now, the Gophers program is in the ultimate flux, and we won't know what happens until Garcia and Christie make their decision. That's going to do it for us on today's episode of Locked On Golden Gophers. I appreciate you tapping in. Be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube. Follow along wherever you get the podcast. Hit the thumbs up button so other Gophers fans can find this video. And hopefully we're talking about positives the next time we dive into a transfer portal talk. Some additions to the Gophers team. And hopefully Dawson Garcia and Cam Christie running it back. That's going to do it for us. Like I said, row the boats, got you my gophers as always. And please don't forget to hit subscribe.